Think running builds strength? Brace yourself for the surprising truth about how all those miles affect your muscles. If running is your primary form of exercise, you might be running yourself right into the nursing home. Now, before you just write me off as just some gym bro hater that's biased against cardio, listen to this. I love running, and I fully acknowledge that running benefits our cardiovascular and cardiorespiratory systems and improves our overall health. And don't worry, I'm not here to tell you you need to stop running. But this video will explain some surprising negative impacts that running has on your strength and muscle mass and the strategies that you need to employ if you want to get all of the benefits of running and avoid the negative consequences. This truly can be one of the few instances in life where you can have your cake and eat it too. We'll explore the scientific literature on the effects that running has on our muscles and we'll look deeply at one particular study of identical twins that was conducted at the Exercise Physiology Lab at Cal State Fullerton. In this study, one of the twins had over 30 years of documented endurance training and completed several triathlons and marathons while his twin brother was a couch potato. The results of their analysis of their strength and muscle mass will shock you. But just to make sure I understand, the non-exerciser was stronger? The common myth that needs to be busted is thinking that running will make you strong. Wrong. So what exactly happens to our muscles when we use running as our main form of exercise? First, let's get on the same page with how we define strength. Strength is fundamentally the ability to exert and or resist force. Now, does running help improve our ability to exert or resist force? Our bodies are remarkably adaptable machines that will continuously modify our physiology in response to the specific stresses that we encounter. How we train will literally determine not only the size and shape of our bodies, but what activities we are capable of doing. The key to every human movement is our muscles, and our muscles contain two main types of fibers, slow twitch and fast twitch. Don't stress, you will not need a degree in exercise physiology for this all to make sense. I will keep this concise and to the point. Slow twitch muscle fibers, also known as type one, are excellent at endurance. They burn fuel efficiently and are what our bodies rely upon for long duration sustained activity from long walks, hikes, bike rides, jogs, etc. Fast twitch muscle fibers, on the other hand, also known as type two, are the fibers that we rely upon when we need to be strong and or fast. When we pick up something heavy, sprint, jump, we call upon our fast twitch fibers to get the job done. To be absolutely clear, we need both these fiber types if we want to live our highest quality of lives as we age. If you care about maintaining the strength to do all of the activities that you currently take for granted, like carrying bags of groceries upstairs, putting luggage in an overhead bin, or lifting it up off a conveyor belt, to hiking, to simply getting up off the floor or out of a chair without needing assistance, this video might just save your life. So in that study of identical twins that I mentioned earlier, what exactly did they discover? Both twins had nearly identical amounts of lean mass. Essentially, they had the exact same amount of total muscle. Even though that endurance athlete twin did all of that running, averaging 40 miles per week, he ate twice as many calories, roughly 3,500 per day versus 1,700 for his sedentary twin, and more protein, he didn't have any more muscle than his sedentary twin brother. Now, the total amount of muscle between these two twin brothers was the same, but the quality of that muscle was far from it. In the study, they found that the endurance athlete twin had 2.4 times more slow twitch muscle fibers, but 13.3 times fewer fast twitch muscle fibers. And in every test of strength and power they put these guys through, the non-exercising twin was stronger than his endurance athlete brother. Stronger, better jumper, um, higher quality muscle. Let me repeat that. The twin that competed in triathlons, that ran, biked, swam almost every day, was weaker than his non-exercising brother. And this guy wasn't slow either. He completed his marathons in just over three hours. That's a seven minute per mile pace. 
he had effectively trained his body to do one thing, to go long distances. Now you might be thinking, well, this is just one study. But this training-induced alteration of muscle fiber type has been shown in multiple studies. This study here showed a 29% loss in fast twitch muscle fibers after just a 13-week marathon training program. Less fast twitch muscle fibers means you have a diminished capacity to generate or resist forces. Put in plain English, less fast twitch muscle fibers directly translates into being weaker. You do not want to be weak. Not now, not ever. The good news is, is that the formula for getting stronger is not a secret. But before we focus on getting stronger, we must first stop doing the things that are making us weaker. Now, before we go any further, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. And more importantly, share this video with an avid runner you know who would benefit from this message. My mission is to help people live longer and stronger lives. And I truly appreciate your support helping me spread the word. Thank you. Now, one note that's important for us to acknowledge is that genetics plays a significant role in the percentage of each type of fiber that we have within our various muscles. That's what made that twin study so fascinating. They were identical twins. They had the same genes. It's a dream like, experiment. Wait, wait. So if you're naturally drawn to running, it's highly likely that your genetics already gifted you with a higher percentage of slow twitch muscle fibers and a lower percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers, as we tend to gravitate towards the activities that we're naturally gifted at. Depending on the sorts of activities that we regularly engage in and the specific exercises that we perform, the overall composition of our muscle fibers can be altered. Different types of training can either increase or decrease our slow and fast twitch muscle fibers within our muscles. Here's the bummer. The more endurance training we do, the more our bodies will convert our fast twitch muscle fibers into slow twitch muscle fibers. Put bluntly, endurance training will literally make you weaker by decreasing the number of fast twitch muscle fibers and thereby lowering our ability to generate and resist force. Now, how about some good news? This study here showed a 15% increase in the percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers in individuals that completed just a six week long strength and power training program. Our bodies are amazing machines of adaptation. We will literally transform at the cellular level to get better at the things that we do regularly. This is an amazing gift that we need to understand and take advantage of if we want to transform our bodies into the best, strongest, most mobile and athletically capable bodies possible to live our longest and highest quality lives. There's nothing wrong with slow twitch muscle fibers. They are the key to prolonged movement and we need them to express endurance in any activity. But they are a key to endurance, not the key to strength. Fast twitch muscle fibers are the key to strength, the key to picking up heavy objects, whether that's a suitcase or a small child. And it is the fast twitch muscle fibers that we lose the most as we age. In fact, several studies show that our slow twitch muscle fibers don't get significantly smaller as we age. It's the fast twitch muscle fibers that we lose. And that is why most of us are going to get weaker as we get older. If you want to maintain your ability to do basic things like gardening and playing with your grandchildren as you get older, maintaining our fast twitch muscle fibers is unequivocally essential and we should strive to build our maximum amount of strength when we are younger and still capable of doing so before we inevitably lose fast twitch muscle fibers and get weaker as we age. That is exactly why I made this video and is exactly what I will show you how to accomplish. Well, in order to build strength and muscle mass, we need to incorporate strength and power training into our lives. During that strength training, we need to demand our muscles to produce a high degree of force in order to stimulate those fast twitch muscle fibers in order to get bigger and stronger. The reason running doesn't make us stronger is that running simply does not require a sufficiently strong force production demand in order to activate those fast twitch muscle fibers. Now, if you enjoy running, adding strength training into your mix will not only make you stronger, but it will increase the likelihood that you have the strength to continue to run in your 70s, 80s, and beyond. Just one to two strength training sessions per week is the minimum effective dose to make meaningful improvements. 
If these sessions are sufficiently intense, intelligently designed and implemented, 30 to 45 minutes will suffice, especially if you focus on completing compound movements like squats, deadlifts, lunges, pull-ups, and push-ups. Now, getting this strength training in may mean that you need to skip a run here or there. But remember, by building our strength, we'll increase our likelihood that we'll be able to run as we're older. These recommendations, of course, depend on your current level of strength and your specific goals for exactly how strong you want to be when you're 80. You'll likely want to work your way up to doing three or more hours per week of strength training, especially if you've neglected strength training work in favor of endurance training. If it fits in your budget, I highly recommend that you find a qualified and experienced trainer in your area to help guide you down this path. Now, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and or you're just not sure where to start, I have a free mobility program that is specifically designed to help prepare your body to begin strength training sessions. And you can find that by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. Now, if you simply refuse to go into the gym and pick up weights, incorporating some short max effort sprints into your running or other endurance training is another fantastic way to activate those fast twitch muscle fibers and give them the stimulation they need to grow stronger. Performing those main compound lifts with some speed and power is another great option. Instead of just squats, try some squat jumps. Instead of deadlifts, try some kettlebell swings. Instead of lunges, do lunge jumps. Instead of plain vanilla push-ups, really try to explode out of the bottom of the push-up. And if your joints can handle it, the burpee never goes out of style. Keep in mind that these plyometric movements carry an increased risk of injury, so make sure that you consult with your physician first and also master those compound movements in their slow, controlled form before adding any weight or speed. Ideally, we're going to want to spend some of our time focused on training strength, some time focused on training speed, and some time focused on training power, which is a combination of strength and speed. This is important because we have two types of fast twitch muscle fibers, 2A and 2X. Think of these as strong and very strong, fast and very fast. Those 2X muscle fibers are very strong and very fast, but also very quick to fatigue. They are the reason why when you sprint, you hit your maximum speed within the first five to 10 seconds. At that point, those 2X muscle fibers are fatigued and running on fumes. That is why training specifically for those 2X muscle fibers involves very short, very fast, explosive forms of exercise, followed by plenty of time to rest to give those 2X muscle fibers an opportunity to recover. Dedicating a portion of our training to specifically target those 2X muscle fibers is critically important for maximizing our health and our functionality as we age. With every passing year, we lose our 2X muscle fibers at an even faster rate than we lose our 2A muscle fibers, which means that we lose our ability for speed and power at an even faster rate than we lose our strength. The good news is that this can be mitigated by spending some time specifically training for speed and for power. By making sure that we're doing some of those explosive plyometric movements that I described earlier, those squat jumps and kettlebell swings and explosive push-ups. The day that you stop jumping is the day that you start getting old. In the interest of keeping this video short, I won't go any deeper into the weeds talking about the different characteristics and training styles for those 2A and 2X muscle fibers. There are also intermediate hybrid muscle fibers as well. Feel free to drop any questions in the comments below. I do my best to reply to every single comment on these videos. And let me know if you'd like a video that more deeply explains the specific training strategies that you could employ to target specific muscle fiber types. One final note on strength training, don't think that you can skip leg day simply because you do all that running. The endurance athlete twin from that study had weaker legs than his brother. Remember, you can't spell legendary without leg day. Now, if you want to get an accurate measure of your current level of strength to see where you're at and you don't have access to a physiology lab, they'll do a muscle biopsy and tell you the exact proportion of fast twitch muscle fibers you possess. There are some much easier ways to assess and track your progress. 
simply keeping track of the weights that you are lifting in a handful of different exercises over time will tell you if you're getting stronger or not. So if you were squatting with 100 pounds last year, and now you're squatting 120 pounds for the same number of reps, you can say with relative confidence that you got stronger. Another simple way to track your upper body strength is to buy a hand grip dynamometer, which are sold on Amazon for roughly $20 to $25. I'll put a link down in the description of this video. Assessing the strength of your grip and then specifically training to make sure that you are increasing your grip strength over time is an incredibly simple and extremely powerful tool that we can use to maximize our lifespan and our health span. There are multiple studies that show a direct correlation between your grip strength and your lifespan. And perhaps even more importantly, we have several other studies that show a direct link between your grip strength and your risk of disability. Possessing a stronger grip means you are less likely to become disabled as we get older and more likely to maintain a higher quality of life. Incorporating some or all of these tools into your lifestyle will help you counteract the negative effects that running has on your strength. But let's not forget all the benefits that running has to offer. In the twin study, the endurance athlete twin had lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, a lower resting heart rate, a higher VO2 max. All of these are powerful indicators of cardiovascular health and overall health. Running may also help us maintain a healthy weight as runners generally have lower rates of obesity than the sedentary population. And in that twin study, the endurance athlete twin had 9% lower body fat than his brother. The key concept to understand is that nothing we do exists in a vacuum. The optimization of one component of our bodies necessarily involves the decline in some other aspect of our bodies. To be the absolute best possible marathon runner you can be, you cannot possess even five or 10 extra pounds of muscle as that's just extra weight for you to carry for those 26.2 miles and will slow you down. And sadly, most of even the younger men that come into my gym are 20 or more pounds of muscle short of where they need to be to be in the top 25% for their age and strength, which is where we want to target if we want to have the lowest risk of disability and the highest quality of life and lifespan. If like me, you love running, we simply need to take some deliberate measures in order to make sure that we're getting all the benefits of running and avoiding all the negative consequences. We have to make sure that the juice is worth the squeeze. Let's make sure we don't lose any muscle mass or strength on account of our running. Let's not lose any of those fast twitch muscle fibers that are so important for our strength. Certainly not just to shave another 10 or 20 seconds off of our mile time. Here's the cold truth. If we're not getting paid to win races, nobody cares about how fast we run a mile. If we live long enough, losing strength and muscle mass will eventually become inevitable. To maintain our ability to do all of the activities that we love to do, we need to do everything in our power to build as much strength as muscle while we can. That is definitely our best bet to ensure we live the highest quality of lives possible as we age. I wanna repeat this one more time. I definitely do not want to convince anyone to stop running. What's important to recognize is that lots of endurance training will optimize your endurance at the expense of your strength. And unless you make a living as an endurance athlete, there really isn't that much benefit to train yourself to be in the top two to 5% in your age for your endurance. Especially if all that endurance training will cause you to be in the bottom 25% for your age and strength. I'm not here to tell anyone how to live their lives. I simply want you to be aware of the trade-offs. My goal for myself and the clients that I train is to be in the top 25% of the population in endurance and the top 25% of the population in strength. And if you're really ambitious and dedicated and sufficiently genetically gifted, you can aim to be in the top 10% of both categories. The scientific literature on lifespan and health span suggests that aiming for these goals is the best way to maximize not only the quantity of our lives, but the quality as well, giving us the best chance possible to maintain our abilities to do all the things that we enjoy for as long as we possibly can. If you benefited at all from this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more content that'll help you live longer, live stronger, and maximize your health span. The all-powerful YouTube algorithm thinks that you're going to like this next video here, and I'll see you there.